Alrighty then. We have done the Sunder Garden. Ooh, I can like move the camera. Oh. Um, and we have fixed the Blight here. We battled the Nightmare. I almost died because boss fights are my nightmare. I hate boss fights. I usually stop playing when there are boss fights. But now we can go. So, we are in the Acorn Woods. And they are already here, of course. <laughs> wow, Yono, you really did it! We witnessed the whole chain jump on the surface as well. Suddenly the bone whites all around us just seem to glow with renewed life. Even Kai lost some of his slouch. I'm thinking Freehaven next, eh? City of Robots. How does that sound? It's just on the other side of Acorn Woods, so we should be able to trek over there in no time. <laughs> you did well in Maggot's Keep, you know? It's an honor to travel with you. Honestly, though, I'm not entirely sure what I did. I don't know if the re revitalization of the Sunder Guard is going to last. Naga's blessing apparently only held out for a thousand years, and unlike me, she probably knew what she was doing at the time. Actually, she might not have. You don't know that. But a thousand years is a really long time, you know? Maybe not for an elephant like you, but for us living in this world, that is going to be several times the length of my life. Makani people has never even seen an elephant. Have never even seen. Their entire history only goes back for a few centuries, and that's already a long time from where I'm standing. Let's go visit them then. Can I blow these? Oh, I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, health. Oh, letters. Oh, yes. Uh... Oh no. Oh yes. Whatever this does, I'm sure I want it. Yes, yes I do. Okay, what's over here then? Snow. Oh, this way to Woolly Mountain. If gate is closed, seek out Captain Cuprum in Freehaven. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, well, we know where that is now, so that's good. Here we go. More health, thank you. I'm kind of like, oh, where's there a Poke Center for me to go heal? And I was like, there is, there are none. <laughs> okay, we know that the key is over there. I just want to. Okay, cool. Looks like dynamite. What are we? Oh, we're blowing up things. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But it's time, so I presume we we get hurt otherwise. Okay. But I need more dynamite. Oh. Oh, it's the fruit of like a flower. That hurt me, but that's fine. Hello. Oh, we have four. Oh, we have five, actually. Oh, but it heals me. Okay, wow, I didn't realize we had five. Should have fixed that. Back in Sunday Garden, but... That's fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I made it. Okay. Okay, but what is the point? Wait, can we use this to light fire? <laughs> Yes, we can. All right. Come with me, Key. Come with me. I am very nice. 
friend. Um, I presume we're gonna need this up here. Oh. oh! Oh! I see. I see what we're doing. I see what we're doing. Here we go. Oh! Train station. Hello. Actually, I'm kind of like questioning whether we shouldn't go back and like read more lore right now. We only have two places left to go. Um. So we have a lot of letters, but maybe we should do that more towards the end? Or when we get to Freehaven. We can do it when we're in, like, as soon as we get to Freehaven, we go back and like read lore. So we do the Acorn Woods now. logical progression maybe oh hello uh, oh oh I see I see the water wheel now do, 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 do. alrighty oh hello Nah, get out of my face. Get out, get out, get out, get out of my face. Give me all your letters. Nope, nope, I'm not dealing with you. I am not dealing with you. But I presume you can use dynamite to, um, to, uh, kill them as well. Or, like, uh, take care of them. Alright, another health token. So we have six now, funnily enough. Clearly what I wanted to do with the key. Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I figured. Can, the blast can like move stuff. I know I could have been standing on the platform when I put the key in, but oh well. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. And it's gonna go that way. Yep. Ha ha! It's getting elaborate now. I was not expecting a boss fight, like, what even? Okay, there's something, and okay, then. Oh, no. Come on, click the right things, at least. Buttons. Wait, what am I doing? No. Oh. I want to blow up these. No, I just want to I just want to light light some fires, I think. Yes. Will that light the fire? I'm not sure. No, I will not. That might light a fire though. Yes, it will. I presume that will light a fire, yes. And now we have to get the original fire back, I guess. Perfect. There we go.
Hello. Nope. Nope. I'm not. Oh. I didn't realize I could blow them away. I clicked the wrong thing. But that is cool. More, uh, more letters. Oh, I was like, we're done? <laughs> like, no, no. Wow, really? <laughs> what? Hey, uh, I'm trying to shoot down the balloons in my slingshot, but it's really, really difficult, I'm telling ya. Why don't you load up your trunk with some peanuts from a bag and see if you can aim better? Plum bum? Alrighty then. I will. I still have peanuts in my trunk. Well, I don't think you're actually trying to aim either, Plum Bum, so... I'm not terribly surprised. We have seven. Alright. Oh. Oh, no. Yo, no! Stop walking when you're at the edge. Bless. There we go. Okay, you have three peanuts. Cool. I thought it was gold first. I was like, ooh. Oh, is this Freehaven? Literally? We're here? Yes, we are here. Semi-sovereign city state. Of okay. Ingrid was here. I really hope we meet this Ingrid. Please. I need. Okay. Um, well, that's actually perfect, because this didn't take much time at all, so then we can go back and uh, read lore in Nightingale City or whatever that was when we get in here <coughs> and get uh, find the train station. Hey. Welcome to Freehaven. Do not cause any trouble. Okay. Good day, Mr. Elephant. We did Acorn Woods Free- Yeah, it's like Woolly Mountain left after this. <coughs> Welcome to Freehaven, Elephant Yono, sir. This is the city we Mikani built for ourselves. It's called Aluminium. It was has very good access to the sea, which is great, because we need to trade with the humans for natural resources, such as metal ore. Cool. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Ba 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 ba. Alright. Oh, there are lots of balloons here. I see. Uh, yes, but no, I don't want to talk to you. I want to find the train station. Okay, we can do this, actually. No, I want to do it when I have uh, eight, actually. More fun. Um, Where's the train station? I know there is one. I know there is one. Okay, not down here. Here? No, 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 it doesn't have the sign, it doesn't have the sign. Duh. Um. Oh. Here it is. Makani and Freeven are preparing for a secret vote to issue a war for liberation against the humans. The hegemonicon deep down in Manufactoria is counting votes as we speak. Keep the mess away from the Queen's Guard at all costs. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, we're gonna fix this. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let's go read some more elephant lore. Uh, this is the right one, yes? Hello, Nightingale City. Which means we have to get to the temple, which is over here. Yeah, I think I think we still haven't solved the whole issue with the love letter thing, but maybe we can do it now. I don't know. I just realized. Okay, I got some more letters for ya. <clears throat> okay, we read about Naga. So here's the last Naga. 
When Ellis and Naga arrived at the battlefield, not a single soldier, single soldier was st still standing. The devastation was total, and Naga wept over the massacre. The corpses of the fallen lay strewn across the fields like poppy seeds. Naga wandered the plains of Polly for many days, and she watched over the dead bodies as they sank down into the damp earth. She chased away crows and scavengers, and she tended to the dead. Her tears fell on the soil. It was not until many, many years later that the first corpse sprouted new life. Out of the mass grave grew the first bone whites, brought back to life by Naga's blessing. The plains of Polly would continue to sprout the living dead, and it, as it does to this day, and would henceforth be known as the sacred cemetery, the Sunder Garden. Okay. Oman the Giant Wave, 2000 years ago. Once upon a time, there was an elephant whose name was Oma. Oma was a bit shy, and he preferred to keep to himself. The elephant Oma built for himself a very high tower, on top of which he could sit and watch the sea and the land and the sky. The people of the villages around Oma's tower would bring fruit and pleasant incense to the elephant and ask him questions about the weather and what else he could spy from so high. But Oma would rarely reply. He enjoyed his solitude, and he didn't want the villagers to come and bother him all the time. In time, the villagers stopped visiting, and Oma was happy. One day, while, e while Elephant Oma was sitting atop his tower, he felt a change in the wind and shiver in the earth. He looked out to the open sea, and saw on the horizon the white foam of an enormous wave. Elephant Oma knew that the wave would flood the land, and he hurriedly climbed down from his tower to warn the people of the villages. The giant way was coming, and it would destroy all the houses and all the farms. Oma told the villager, villagers about the approaching wave, but they did not believe him. The villagers did not understand why the elephant, who hardly ever would give them news, suddenly wanted them all to listen. And besides, the wave on the horizon was not visible from the ground yet, and Oma alone had been able to see it from the tower. His warnings were all ignored, and Oma realized that even if all the people started moving up the hills to safety, they would not be able to get far enough before the wave hit. Oma understood that he had to do something. Elephant Oma walked down the, to the coastline and saw the wave approaching. He took a deep, deep breath and gathered all his massive strength. And Oma swung his mighty trunk and he stomped the ground so hard, so hard. And in this great shuffle, the very mountains began to crumble and move. The chain of mountains crawled down into the sea, and the sea floor began to rise, and a whole new landmass began to form in the sea. The crescent moon-shaped tongue of land stretched as a wall around the shores where the villagers lived, shielding them from harm. And so when the giant wave finally rolled in, it was broken up by the rocky cliffs of Oma's new peninsula. The people of the villages were saved. Oh, that reminds me, we saw that something's called Oma's Peninsula on the map, so maybe we actually can go there too later on, so we're not like, done or whatever. That night, the people of the villages gathered in a splendid celebration. They had all seen the wave crash against the blockade Elephant Oma had created. The village elders apologized to Oma for not having believed in him, and Oma decided to build a ladder to the top of his tower, so that the people could visit him from time to time. He only built a very narrow ladder, however, so that only the children would be small enough to climb up and down it. Oma didn't want to be bothered by the affairs and worries of the grown-ups. And from that day, the children of the villages would run back and forth, bringing messages between the people and the old elephant. The land tongue Oma created exists even to this day. Then we have Gaia's sonnet 3000 years ago. Come walk with me and gaze upon the stars, spoke Gaia with her tusks of ivory white. The principles below this world of ours are clear as day as soon as comes the night. Come walk with me and gaze upon the stars. Oh, okay, it's the same, and then we continue. In circular paths, the spheres of heaven glide. The void of cosmos, planets circumfuse. Mathematics is what inside it hide. Proportion, ratio, and hypotenuse. And in that ratio lives a merry tune. We find it if we measure carefully. Between my ivory tusks, a string is strewn and pluck to vibrate in fine harmony. Let's all dance when you take a string and thump it, and I'll invent a new device, the trumpet. Alright, that's all Gaia did, I guess. Dialogues of Ronin, 5,000 years ago. 
Princess Vanya, daughter of the Emperor, sought out the elephant Ronin one night in the Elder Tree Grove just outside the city, where he used to sit and gaze at the stars. When she saw him, she spoke thus. Elephant Ronin, who sit in the Elder Tree Grove, I am the seventh of the Emperor's daughters, and as such, there are no noble princes left in any of the neighboring realms for me to marry when I come of age. I mean, marry another princess. All my sisters will have lives of luxury and plenty, all but me, who am the youngest. I have sought you out, great elephant, in hope that you can offer me advice. My dear child, I am delighted to meet you. But why would you say a life of luxury and plenty is a life worth living? Would a life of toil and hardship be less desirable? All living creatures shun pain. This is evident. I seek the calm and serenity that comes from a life free from disturbance and suffering. Surely, pleasure is the opposite of suffering, and should thus be aspired to, just as pain should be shunned? But the pleasure will fade away as soon as it is over, as will the pain, as will all sensation. You can remember what that you felt pain yesterday, but you cannot feel the same pain again. The same is true for pleasure. I agree. That is why one should not chase after immediate pleasures, but rather live a life where pleasure is secured in the future as well. One might even forego immediate pleasures, if one is certain doing so will save one from future pain. Maybe a good life is not so much about what you feel, but uh, about what you do. The present is ever-changing, and so is the future. The past, on the other hand, cannot be altered. Thus, the pleasurable sensations you feel now, and might feel in the future, are fleeting and impermanent. But the story of your actions will remain forever true in the past. That this is your legacy, your memory, your tale. So I should focus on the actions I take. I don't think you make actions in English, I think you take actions. Rather than the pleasures I seek and receive, but the seeking of pleasure will itself be an action. But is the purpose of the search, the pleasure, or the seeking? Contrarywise, then, the possession of a good story is itself pleasurable. I can live a life of action and stories, but the happiness I get out of that life is the same kind of pleasure my sisters will receive in their decorated halls, their banquets, and their bedchambers. Then maybe we are talking about the same thing after all. If the pleasure of action, the pleasure of creating memories and stories, can rival the pleasure of material luxury, then perhaps the circumstances of your physical body are not the only thing that can lead to your happiness? Are you saying that I can devote myself to actions, to study and research, to charity work, to art and architecture, to adventure and discovery, and that this can be a rewarding, as rewarding as a life of pleasure? Are you in fact saying that this is what would truly be a happy life? I don't know what a happy life is. This is why I sit here, looking at the stars, and waiting for people to come and talk to me and tell me their thoughts. You have given me much joy this evening, and much to think about. And I suppose sitting still can also be an action, if you do it on purpose. That was very... In very wise, very interesting. The myth of Yen and Uruk, 10,000 years ago. Here falls the myth of Uruk, such as it has been passed down through the generations. Son of Porcupine was the greatest hunter in the land, and his bow was feared by all animals. He led a group of hunters who would return each night with food for the tribe. But the land was empty and barren, all animals had fled or been killed. So the porcupine said to Yen the elephant, I am the greatest hunter in the land, and these are my hunters, but the land is barren and empty of life. We can no longer hunt for food to feed our tribe, we need a new source of food. An elephant Yen said to Son of Porcupine, You have started on a path at the end of which you will die. Nonetheless, I shall aid you in whichever way I can. For through your death, your people will become stronger and more numerous than ever before. Take these seeds and bury them in the earth, then wait for three days and return to the same spot. And Sondo Porcupine took the seeds and buried them deep. He and the other hunters waited for three days, and on the morning of the third day, they found that the whole valley had turned into a resplendent field of grain. There was more food in one place than they had ever seen before. Son of Porcupine and his tribe began to harvest the grain, and more tribes arrived from near and far to help with the harvest and share the food. They stopped traveling around in search of food, and instead built their huts in the valley and along the river. On the seventh day, Son of Porcupine became a king. On the twelfth day, other people arrived in the valley, and they did not come for the food. They sought the source of the food, which they perceived to be the power of the king, Son of Porcupine. The invaders were envious of this power, and wanted to seize it. Sounds very human-like. 
Son of Porcupine said to Yen, the elephant, I am the king of this valley, and these are my people. But other people desire my power, and in envy seek to destroy what I have created. We can no longer travel to avoid fights, because our homes and lives are dependent on these fields of grain. And Elephant Yen replied, I warned you that suffering would come to you, son of Porcupine, but on the other side of suffering lies strength. Take these rocks and place them in a circle around the valley, then wait for three days. And Son of Porcupine placed the rocks in a circle around the valley and waited for three days. On the morning of the third day, the valley and all the huts and houses had been surrounded by a sturdy stone wall, and it had become a city. The city was called Uruk. And on the fifteenth day, the hunters became warriors. The invaders lined up outside the walls of Uruk, ready to do battle. Son of Porcupine stood atop the city wall with his fearsome bow, forced to protect a livelihood that could not be moved. A livelihood that had transformed from sustenance into wealth, wealth and thus attracted envy. A spear thrown by an envious invader sailed through the air, was a spear of hatred and greed, seeking the wealth hidden inside the city walls. And the spear of hatred found its way into the heart of Son of Porcupine, who fell from his position on the wall. The blood of his veins flowed forth and surrounded the city like a water-filled moat, and the invaders were held off. The people of the city of Uruk lived lives of richness and resplendence. Alright, and then we have the last ones here. Agra, 20,000 years ago. Oh yeah, that's the first elephant. My name is Babur Zeb of Cerno, and I have devoted my life to the study of elephant lore. A few generations before my birth was the era of Elephant Gaia and we are now patiently waiting for the next elephant, whoever it may be, which was Oma. In the earliest of human history, mankind lived as hunter-gatherers, moving around across large areas of wilderness and subsisting on whatever food they managed to hunt down or pluck from trees and bushes. We call this period the Stone Age, because this was before mankind had started using metal tools and crafted their utensils out of stone. It would not be until much later, in the era of Elephant Yen, that humans began living in cities, cultivating land, and using metal tools. This is the time of Elephant Agra, the All Mother, the very first elephant we know of. She came to aid mankind and live among them as a guide and mentor. We have absolutely no written record from this age. Indeed, it seems humans had not developed the art of writing at this point. Instead, we must rely exclusively on the oral tradition and what few archaeological artifacts we have managed to find, such as cave paintings and small trinkets carved in stone. Thus, we know very little of the life and deeds of Elephant Agra. She seems to have been recognized as some sort of deity or supernatural spirit, and she seems to have covered an astounding distance by foot as she traveled across the world, often followed by various tribes and communities of early humans. Evidence suggests that it was Agra the All-Mother who first taught mankind how to create and use fire. Her pilgrim caravan across the continents may in large part have been this to spread this archaic technology to far-flung tribes and communities. As we can see, the relationship between human and elephant goes back for a long, long time. One would even be tempted to suggest that without elephants taking an interest in our developing, development and flourishing, it is unlikely that we would have ever been able to rise to the level of cultural and civilizational sophistication that we see today. We may have been forever destined to roam the earth in packs, eating berries, roots, and nuts, and freeze in the cold winters. Both for the gift of fire and for the beginning of a long chain of future elephants, we have a lot to be thankful to the All-Mother for. It must be noted, however, that there may have been several elephants before Agra, there may have been elephants in this world before humankind even existed. It's impossible for us to know. Uh, and that is all I can find here. That's all the elephants. Uh, I mean, everything is pieced together at this point. Uh, okay, I think we've read everything. I can't really see anything else here. Uh... Oh. oh! Oh, zoom! Now I see what the zoom means. Okay, you can zoom in like this. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's triangle for me. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. That, that, that's all the text about the elephants. Yay! I should really- we should really go check on that, uh, side quest with the love letter. Now that we're here. This episode is over time, but... I don't want to have anything undone, like... 
Something he said something about Free Haven. It's over here. Oh, yeah, moved. Ah, Julie, thou distant star, how I wish I could reach thee, as thine gleaming beams of light reacheth reacheth me. I silently love her, but I can't muster the courage to talk to her. My dad doesn't seem to like her much either, so he's probably pleased with my ineptitude. Okay, we need to get the flowers or whatever it was she wanted us to bring him. Okay, okay. We'll do this now because we can, so. Long episode, but here we go. We're doing some, uh, we got, we went through, um, Acorn Forest, Acorn Woods, and now we're doing some, like, some old stuff, whatever. Okay, where did she live? Here? No. Uh, did she live down here somewhere? No. 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 But it's somewhere around here, like I know it's somewhere around, I just can't remember the exact house. Uh, yes. I will... Oh, we can water her flowers again. Okay, let's go. I'm not sure why the dad moved now, but whatever. It's good for us. We can, we can do it now. I mean, it's not that far to run anyways. Hello. Oh, are these from Julie? I can't believe it! She has noticed me after all! My dad won't let me outside much, so I've spent a lot of time writing poems for my unattainable Julie. Will you deliver them to her for me as a response for the roses? There are quite a lot of them. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. I guess maybe Yona will be like a very important elephant, maybe for the Makani. My feeling. Hello. <gasps> oh, he responded! I can't believe it! My love is not unrequited after all. Requited? Something. I always knew, you know, in the bottom of my heart, as they say. I'm going to read all these poems, and then I'm going to write a long love letter in reply. How about maybe meeting him in person? Oh no, there's going to be a long time before I work up the courage to do that. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, oh, okay, letters. Yeah, uh, we don't, kinda, we actually don't need more letters now. But, uh, money, money's good. Okay. Alright, let's just take the train back and then we're done. Can we, can you do anything more with the letters? It seems like there are a lot of letters. Or it's just like an... Okay, fine. There's like an infinite supply of letters technically in the game, I guess, so... We'll be sure to be able to make it. I guess. Alright, uh... Freehaven. It's all the way over here. Alright, here we go. Let me just get up to uh, where Freehaven starts. Boom. Oh, look, it's like we just got in here. What do you mean? We ain't been around in Freehaven before. Okay, cool. That is it for this episode, so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see ya.